Hello everyone, welcome back to Tank Academy with me, Fubsy of What University. So, today what we're going to look at, well, today we're going to be looking at light tanks. Um, again, bear in mind that this is by no means a complete guide of everything that you need to know. This is simply a beginner's guide, that's the whole idea of the Tank Academy, is to give you a foundation to, to base yourself from. Um, sk beginner skills uh, that you can really build on to become a top top gamer so what are we doing here well the thing to remember with the scout tank is that it's about trying to get eyes on the enemy now you don't need to light up the entire team you only need to light up one or two tanks at a time if you expose yourself too much in an attempt to light up the entire team you're probably going to start taking damage early you generally don't have very good armor or many hit points so it's never a good idea to be uh, taking damage early on. So what we're trying to do here is just get some early spots, one or two tanks, and light them up for our team to start softening them up. Now all the time that we're doing this, we're looking for a chance to break through. Maybe to try and find their artillery, if it's a game where they have artillery. In this game they don't. Um, again, remember what we did in episode 2 about analyzing the enemy team um, but we can still look for a chance to try and break through and get behind the enemy or get behind sections of the enemy where we can exploit their rear armor force them to turn and deal with you and in turn that takes the guns away from your heavy tanks your tank destroyers and allows them to start dealing damage so we went to the middle of the map there we did a little bit of spotting not a lot was happening so we've fallen back and we're now starting to make our move north as you can see the majority of their team is in this section of the map uh, the only tanks that have not been spotted is their AMX 1390 and we know they've got four tanks here now the 1390 shows up so we know there's two here two here one here the rest of their team down there so they've left the north quite open to attack. And again, this is another important point to having a mod pack, is it allows you to kind of keep track of what you could possibly run into. So at this stage, I know we can push the north. Um, the tanks over there, where the TDs are, can't really do a lot. So we push forward, take out the VK2801, and start pushing on towards the enemy base. Now again, we don't want to push out too much, expose ourselves too much, but we can have a quick little peek and see what we can see. Again, this will force hopefully some of the tanks down here to start thinking about coming back to defend the base, and in doing so take some of the pressure off our heavies down on that road, allowing them to concentrate on holding that road. So pop round there, proxy spot the... Uh, T28 and fall back because the last thing I want to do is start getting into a gunfight with the T28 and simply do not have the armour to match what that gun can put out we're still just trying to keep him lit if we can without exposing ourselves and then we start to see the T54 coming back our way so it's time to make make hay, get out of dodge and again conserve the hit points keep yourself in the game for later on now all the time that you're doing these kind of things you want to be thinking about where's my way out if I need to tuck tail and run where can I go so we've decided this time not to get into a fight um, but I've ran around this side because again I want to still be able to put some damage down when I get the opportunity <coughs> and now having a look see if I can get anything on the T28 or if I can get the SP1C the T28 puts a shot into me, but in return for his uh, 437, we managed to put 471 into the SP1C and secure our second kill of the game. Now I'm in an auto loader here, the AMX 1390, it's one of my favourite tanks that I've played so far in the game. And as you can see it's got a nice long reload there. So we've decided to reload even though we had a couple of shots left. 
mainly because two shots is not going to be helpful if I run into a full health tank. Um, so I want to get reloaded while it's quiet and I can do that. Again, hit your F8 key. Let people know that you're reloading, that you're not going to be able to support them for a while. As you can see here, the T-54 is pushing on our Tiger. I'm still not reloaded, so I can't go around that corner just yet. Now I'm reloaded, I can start pushing forward and looking, can I put some damage down? If the voice sounds a little bit weird this time, guys, as well, I'd just like to uh, let you know that it is late at night, so I'm trying to keep the noise down. I've also got a bit of a cold, so I'm a bit stuffy. Um, hopefully the visual side of it is much nicer for you this time. I've tried fiddling around with the settings somewhat to try and get you a much clearer, crisper picture. So we've had a little look round by the base there. There's not a lot going on. So we're now pushing forward again. Different location. Keep mobile. Keep them guessing where you are. Keep changing the firing angles that you've got on them. And we're now trying to take up a position where we can be a pain in the backside. So the T28 that came round there, trying to uh, outflank us at the top there. He's now concerned with where I've gone. Um, whereas if I hadn't have come down there, if I'd have stayed round, round by their base, round by their Tiger 1, he could have come round behind us and uh, we would have been between a rock and a hard place there. So again, just keeping on the move, keeping things lit, so our team know exactly where people are. I'll take a shot there, it jams the turret. Um, and it's about this time here now that I spot Lord Zulu. Um, it, Lord Zulu's from Havoc P, which is our... It's one of the clans that we've got in Wat Uni. Um, we have Havoc, Havoc 2, Havoc 3, Havoc P, Wat Uni 1, Wat Uni 2, and we also have some North American clans. Um... Havoc P is the one that we do the, the clan wars with and the higher tier strongholds with. So I try and get a couple of shots into this tank here. Miss the first one horribly. Land the second one. And then secure the third kill of the game. Now I did spot, if I remember rightly, I did spot Lord Zulu there. And I had said hello to him at the start of the game. For some reason, I always manage to up my game when I'm playing up against a clan mate. So um, it's always quite interesting when I come up against one. So I managed to pop a shot into him there, having dodged his shot, and now again I want a nice long reload. That actually worked off quite well for me, because I think Zulu, if I would have been uh, trying to trade with him there, would quite clearly have won that. Um, but just that little pause while I'm reloading, he probably thought I'd disappeared, I'd gone somewhere else, didn't want to fight him. Um, or he simply just didn't want to sit still because he could see the conqueror pushing there now again situational awareness keep an eye on your minimap so I'm fully aware that our tiger and the, uh, the tanks that we had by the base have uh, died but I managed to get into Lord Zulu here track him on the first one second one I think bounced could see him turning his turret towards us so I don't want to let him get a shot into me Again, just pop in behind, make sure I become unspotted, then pop back out and see if we can get some more shots in. Again, I can see the side of his tank, so it's a nice little target for me. And managed to finish off Zulu there, and that now puts me on four kills. But again, I'm now on the reload, so time to get all the information you can from the minimap think about what you want to do what's your team doing how can you support them so if I was to pause the game here I'm not going to but just think where would you go if it was the game that you were playing are you going to go and support the heavies and you become in a face to face battle with their IS3 their T28 their T54 do you try and flank them but you've got no support and it's a bit of a dilemma because especially in an auto loader if you try and flank and you run out of your shots then you've got a problem 
you know, you're going to be reloading for near to a minute um, where they can be putting damage into you and all you can really be doing is trying to hide from shots, dodging shots um, and spotting. So I decided to take the long way round. So I head back towards our base and then up to the north. This just gives me time to reload. Now at this point, I'd only got two armor penetrate uh, armor piercing shells left. So I go for a full clip of gold. Um, you have to take gold when you when you're driving one of these tanks because they can meet tier tens. And the last thing you want to be doing is coming up against a tier ten heavy tank, and you haven't taken any gold with you because it'll be an absolute nightmare for you to try and penetrate them. You know, if if you're one on one at the end. You don't want to have that advantage of the view range. You can see him. He can't see you. And yet there's nothing you can do about it because you can't penetrate his tank. So we've reloaded a gold clip. Um, it's going to be a little bit wasted on some of the tanks. Because some of the tanks and the angles that I'll get on them, as you'll see in a moment, you don't really need the gold. Um, but it's something that we have to go for, as I say, because of running out of the armor penetrating shells. So I line myself up there, ready that I can run away if need be. I pop out, I've got the back of the T-54, and I manage to put a nice couple of shots into him before he uh, turns and manages to get his gun towards me. The third one bounces off his frontal, frontal armour, and then it's just pulling forward. And now that's one less gun that our heavies have got pointed their way. So again, now he can now think about me he's worried about me our heavies can push and I'm not going to stay there and get into a, a battle with him because that's, that's what he wants that's going to play into his hands so I decide to move now all I'm trying to do I still want to stay on the same tank but I want to try and get a different firing line onto him I want to pop up somewhere that he's not expecting so I have to take the long way around here just to avoid being spotted um, but I managed to get up onto a a different firing line here from uh, from where I was and it really works in my favor so make use of the fact that you've got a mobile tank you can see in the chat there I'm just warning my team about the time we're down to two and a half minutes left um, I was a little bit concerned at this point because I know that I can't push against three tanks and as you can see here now the T-54 has gone back to try and deal with the IS-3 and it's the TD that's come round to have a look at me. I know I've got gold loaded, but I still wait until I get the side of his tank. I knew he couldn't see me, but I don't want to waste my shots. Especially now with how long we've got left, I've got to make these shots count because I'm not going to have time for too many reloads. Again, wait until I'm unspotted, pop out, get the shot in, make sure it counts. That was the last shot in my clip. I'm now entering into my last clip of gold. So I've got to really make these count because then all I've got left is a clip of HE and the two shells from the armor piercing um, to actually get through this clip and another clip. I think I would probably run out of time anyway due to the reload. Now, the T-54 is going to know that I'm coming. So again, I'm trying to take a, a route that's going to be difficult for him to spot me. I then spot on the mini-map that he's probably more concerned with the IS-3 and the Tiger 2. So, he's on low health. He's probably looking the other way. He's just fired, as you've seen. So now it's time to get into him. So, use of auto-aim on the move and we get in there so he's now down leaving us with just one last chance to earn a top gun we're on five kills we've got four rounds there's an IS-3 can we get him the first one doesn't do any hit point damage the second one lands what's going to happen oh we managed to get him just before he takes us the conqueror there letting us know he's out of ammo but he did a good job of being a distraction and we managed to pick up the win. So, onto the end game screen. 
as you can see there it was a first class mastery uh, we also managed to pick up a fire for effect uh, Lion of Sinai we picked up a bruiser we picked up a top gun we managed to rack up 44,512 credits 1,894 XP I can tell you now that that game was just short of being 10,000 WN8 team scores second highest for XP second highest for damage for a light tank I'll take that all day long did cost us a little bit but that was due to the uh, the ammunition costs of firing the gold there well I hope this video has been good for you I hope you've enjoyed it um, let me know what you feel about the uh, the video settings now are they better for you is the audio okay by my stinking cold and hopefully I'll see you soon with another episode of Tank Academy I've been Fubzy